In this video, we'll cover wall blocking for wall framing to support wall cabinets or grab bars. Adding this level of detail for your plans can be helpful for framing installation. Let's begin by looking at the wall framing, then cabinet blocking, and then finally blocking for grab bars. For your wall blocking, you'll need to make sure your wall framing has been built. Let's review the wall framing. Underneath the framing tools, I'm going to come over to the wall framing. You can see currently I have it turned on to automatically build the wall framing. Since I have this turned on to be automatic, at the point when I begin to add the wall blocking, also called wall bridging inside of our program, the program will prompt us to turn off the automatic build wall framing. Down at the very bottom of this panel is the option to build the wall framing details from the exterior. That way when you open up an individual wall, it will show you the detail of that from the exterior side. It may be more intuitive to show that from the interior side, and when you uncheck that, you will see them from the interior. If it's on the exterior, you'll just need to remember that it's on the other side, and the wall detail will show you whether it's exterior or interior. You can see in this sample plan I have open, the wall framing is being displayed inside of the walls. If your wall framing is not being displayed, make sure you change your, say, plan view to turn that on, or in any view you can turn the individual framing on for the wall. I'm going to select the wall that I want to add blocking for for the wall cabinets. In my lower edit menu is a tool that is called Open Wall Detail. In the wall detail is a label, and below the label is View from Inside. Wall Layer 4, if you were to open up this wall, Layer number four would be the framing layer that we're looking at. Underneath the framing tools, I have my tool palette open on the left-hand side, is the tool for wall bridging, also known as wall blocking. When I select this tool and I come over and I drag out the blocking, you can see that it's alternating. Also, since we have automatic framing on, the program is notifying us that we're modifying the wall framing and at this point we'll need to turn off the automatic framing by saying yes. The wall blocking that I just created is in a staggered mode. The wall blocking for the cabinets I want to create, I want it to be in line. You can always click on the blocking after you've created it and change it after the fact. If you know in advance that you want it in line or staggered, you can make that change in the framing defaults. I'm going to go ahead and set that up for the blocking for the cabinets on the wall. I'm going to come down and I'm going to uncheck staggered blocking. When I use the blocking tool at this point and I come across, I'm just going to click and drag all the way across this wall. The blocking is now in line because of that change to the default. I want to modify this blocking to rotate it and I'm also going to set it to be on the inside of the wall where the cabinets can be easily installed. I'm going to double click on the blocking and on the general panel down midway is the option to rotate the blocking. I'm going to make sure that it's flat to the inside. Make that adjustment. Then I'm going to use my dimension tool, position it, make a copy up above that so that I have two rows of blocking for the wall cabinets. To dimension the first row of blocking, I'm going to use the end-to-end -end dimension tool and come in here, pick up the snap on the top of the bottom plate, run that dimension up to the blocking. I'll zoom in a little bit. Select the blocking itself. Move my cursor over the dimension. I'm going to set this to be at 54 inches from the bottom of the top plate. Now I'm going to create a copy of the blocking by clicking on it using the copy tool and slide the blocking up. As I'm sliding this up, one of the things I like to do to minimize keystrokes while I'm still left clicking and sliding up is press the tab key. This allows me to enter in the coordinates, and since I have this unchecked with Polar, I'm going to come in and I'm going to type in an exact amount. In that case, I'm going to type in 41 inches. And now I have another row of blocking. With the end-to-end -end dimension tool, come in, pick up the snap off the bottom of the plate, and now you can see my blocking, the first row is at 54 inches, and then the next row is at 95 inches. Let's look at one more wall for the cabinet wall blocking. I'm going to close this wall detail. I'm going to move over to the far wall on the right hand side. Click on the open wall detail button. 
And when we look at this wall, you can see that there's already staggered blocking in effect. And the reason is because I checked the option underneath the framing defaults to include the wall blocking on the interior before I'd close the dialog and turned off automatic framing. So that's why the blocking is already in this wall. You can set this up when you frame your walls to include interior and exterior blocking and then your walls will have the blocking automatically placed. Now that the blocking is already in place, let's go ahead and double click to open up the blocking. I'm going to make the same change we did on the previous wall to rotate it flat to the inside. This wall also viewed from the inside Wall layer two, this is an interior four wall. It's composed of three wall layers, two dry walls, and then the layer two, which is the framing. And it happens to be a three and a half inch wall. The blocking comes in to match what your wall width is. So I'm going to change this blocking to be at five and a half inches. That way it will match the other wall that we just opened up, which was an exterior six inch wall. So let's go ahead and update that blocking. I'm going to use the dimension tool and to end dimension. Come in here, pick up the plate, pull that over. Again, click on the blocking, set the dimension at 54 inches, and then just using the copy tool, slide a copy of that up, press the tab key, and I'm going to set it to be 41 inches. So now I have the wall blocking on two of the walls. I'll go ahead and skip ahead and do it on the third wall and then let's take a look at this in a 3D overview using the perspective framing overview camera. And you can see the wall blocking. In this view I've turned on the wall cabinet so you can easily identify where that blocking is and on all three of the walls in the kitchen you can see where the blocking is directly behind the cabinet. Sometimes it's nice to run a cross-section view to see that blocking as well. In the floor plan view, let's just toggle back. I'm going to use the back clip cross-section camera and I'm just going to cut a small section in between the wall cabinet and the wall. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this particular area. I've turned on the wall blocking layer. You can easily do that by going into your active layer display and in this case I've turned on the layer for wall bridging so that that item is being displayed. You can also dimension this and do any annotations. As you can see here, I've done with the call out on both the cross section view and then on the wall detail view. To add blocking for a grab bar in the powder room, I'm going to click on the wall. In the lower edit menu, I'm going to open up the wall detail. As you can see, the wall is being viewed from the inside and the powder room is going to be right in this bay right here. Using the blocking tool, come in, click and drag the blocking for the powder room across here. And I'm going to go ahead and double click on the blocking and then let's change that to a two by 10, set it at nine and a quarter, rotate it flat to the inside. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the dimension tool and end to end dimension, pick up the top of the plate, and then I can click on the blocking, highlight the dimension, enter in the value for that, and precisely locate it. You can add further annotations to the wall detail for your framing installation. One final thing to leave you with for wall framing. Now that blocking has been added to several of the walls, if there is a need to go back in and update the framing, an automatic update of the framing will replace all of your blocking. It's a good practice to consider retaining the wall framing for those specific walls. I'm going to click on the walls we've modified through this process and I'm just going to hold my shift key down and grab all four of these walls. Use the open tool in the lower edit menu and on the structure panel for this wall there's a category for framing and a check mark that you can retain the wall framing. That way if you need to rebuild the wall framing for your model, it won't replace the framing that you've added for that wall framing in those specific blocked walls. Well that wraps up this video on wall blocking. To learn more, please see the built-in help file as well as our other videos. And thanks for watching.